My name is Sebastian Kavatsa and I'm a professional actor from Ljubljana, Slovenia, Europe. I'm going to discuss arts, compassion and creativity with Sasha Kerkos. Join us. Hi, Sebastian. It is really, really, really nice to have you today. And uh, especially because um, I know you as many, many people. Um, you are an actor, a father, a friend, a very special person that uh, worked uh, in a lot of roles through your life. And um, I'm, I'm really honored that you will be sharing some of your experiences with me today. Thank you, Sasha, for inviting me. <laughs> I hope that you have some fun conversations and that, that this will bring out some uh, amazing stories, knowledge, and so on. So um, <clears throat> people do know you as an actor. You have many, many other skills. And um, let me start from the start, if I can. So I would really like to hear a few sentences about um, how did you experience actors as a child and how did that change over time? Because you're coming from a family of actors and uh, I'm sure you have a very, very specific um, perspective on this uh, question. Well, um, how should I put it? Uh, as Shakespeare already said, uh, we start acting as children, but I do not relate to those years as an actor. I, I experienced it more as a, as a play. So not acting, more playing, but yeah, of course. Eventually I was probably acting as a child already. And my father is an actor. Uh, since always, uh, I perceived him as an actor, not only a father. And yeah, maybe maybe I started acting before I realized it for real. And how did that change over time? Um, you know, like um, it was probably like several points in your life when you had these realizations uh, that all of a sudden acting became your passion or something you wish to do. What was that, um, perhaps, that specific moment in time? I think it was in high school when we had this theater group I was involved with. And I got that feeling that it might fulfill me in, in the future to come. But I was not sure until I, I did the, the entering exams or I passed the exams to to the academy, into the academy at the University of Ljubljana. Then I spent like approximately two years asking myself, is this it? Or am I going to be able to, to persevere in this kind of world? Because it's um, very tough schedules. It's 12 hours a day. Uh, studies at the academy and somewhere in, in between uh, these four years, because the academy lasts for four years, I realized that it might be the right profession I chose. So if you're asking me about the trigger point or how should I put it, a crucial point in my studying career uh, or in my career as an actor as a whole, yeah, it was uh, an experience I, I, I had on stage when I truly managed to enter into the shoes of a character I played. And it made me sure, or I, I became sure about... Uh, about acting as, as my life path. Uh, what was the character, may I ask? <laughs> well, it was um, a character named Jean from August Strindberg's Miss Julie. He's like um, a butler in a country mansion of Miss Julie. 
Thank you so much for this uh, intro, intro into your world. So um, at that time, um, when you were um, starting your acting uh, career, and you just said that it's probably pretty demanding to step in someone's shoes, uh, you know, to really take on the role. How was your life and your work of acting intertwining? What was the role of acting in your life? You know, uh, and well-being, does it change with getting older? Like, can you see the difference? Yes, of course you see the difference because um, as the time goes by, you start to perceive everything with more ease. You're not that uh, ambitious anymore. Um, but I really had the, the chance and the opportunity to to go all through the, through all the the big parts or big roles in classical theater um, and in front of the camera. So yeah, um, as time goes by, you start to to perceive it. Mm more easily but i never had that feeling that uh, my job as an actor is deeply connected with my everyday situations i do perceive the world in a different way i do understand people differently uh, due to the fact that um, i have to involve a lot of compassion and emotional work uh, while um, building a character. But I never used acting in real life to, to use it to, to achieve something in a private uh, situation. Never. I just used the techniques on stage or in front of the camera. But of course, um, some of the techniques as the relaxation or focusing or sensory work did apply into my private life. Um, when I was with myself, I could use some of the techniques to, to get relaxed or focused more, of course. Uh, you mentioned um, sensory work uh, just now, and I actually uh, had the pleasure to see you working with a group of uh, people in Munich uh, performing sensory works. Uh, and I've realized how hard it is to, for people to actually open up emotionally and how hard it is to um, allow someone else to guide them into that depth, if I can call it a depth, emotional depth. Um, can you tell me more about the sensory work? Uh, what is your experience uh, of impact on different people and yourself? Um, sensory work was developed by Stanislavski in his uh, system or methodical approach to acting techniques. Sensory work basically is used for, um, for relaxation, to, to help the actor um, step into the moment of here and now. So it helps actors to go out of their heads because the heads are the problem of, e we face the problem of ego in the head. When I, when I consider, um, or when I'm asking myself, am, am I going to be good enough? Am, gonna, am, am, am I going to be able to fulfill um, the peer pressure of expectations of the audience? And I'm going to satisfy the director's uh, indications. So all those are the questions that actor asks herself or himself, but the character doesn't because the character is not is not in a situation that is obliged to follow anybody's direction or is not obliged to, to speak the words somebody else wrote him or he doesn't have to follow the mise-en-scene choreography or whatever. So, yeah, all these techniques, the relaxation, the concentration, focusing, and uh, sensory work are uh, were, were actually developed for for helping the actors uh, to get into the state of creative mind here and now. That's basically the point of it. So when I'm 
focusing on what I feel on my back when I sit in a chair or what do I hear from the outside or what smells do I smell or what kind of a taste, taste do I have in my mouth. Well, when I'm working on that, on sensory work, I, <clears throat> I gradually become more present here and now. So I'm not in my head. I, I step into my body and my body knows perfectly well how to behave or how to feel. It doesn't need any directions or director to, to help it get there. So the sensory work actually, if I can just take it out of the context that you were just explaining, is actually helping you to kind of ignore the ego mind and step into the body and other sensors that perfectly know what they need to do. Um, it's, so it's that you are not over-questioning yourself. It's, it's a paradox uh, of which also already Didier wrote about. But So the actor needs an ego, of course, she or he needs an ego to, to step into the process. But um, and it, we need the ego to, to, to step on stage or in front of the camera at the, at the end of the day. But uh, when the actor or the actress is questioning himself or herself with questions that character doesn't question himself or herself, uh, there's not much use of it. Because, you know, the audience can feel it, can see it. So uh, as well as it can, the audience can see if uh, the actor or the actress is able to step into the shoes of char character, which is uh, on stage or in front of the camera. So, yeah, the sensory work actually is like uh, one aspect of using that technique is to keep our sensors alive, so to keep our consciousness in space and time present, and to, to help us get into the body while the ego might always want to, to get us back into our, our heads. So, yeah, it's complex. We have to <laughs> challenge our creative creative inner self with some other tasks that help us go into the situation of a story, of a plot or uh, in a scene inside of a story or to step into the character shoes, basically. Yeah, yeah once in the past we did discuss uh, all of this and you mentioned um, uh, the Stanislavski methods, the system of methods. Um, and what we are discussing now, you said that it belongs to people, but uh, what is extremely important this method? You know, how this uh, Stanislavski method help you get into someone else's shoes and uh, what do you feel is something utterly yours that you have discovered, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in your uh, process of acting? Uh, well, I did my diploma. Um, uh, I was studying modern acting, acting techniques. Okay, I'm classically trained, but we have to consider Stanislavski as the base the, or the basics of all of modern techniques, acting techniques. So all the modern acting techniques include re relaxation, concentration, sensory work, emotional exercises, magical as if, so uh, the actor... Uh, is trying to put himself in, into a situation with a magic if. So there's, an, there's a question he has to answer. Uh, for example, what if I would have, have uh, entered the room full of politicians? How would, it, how would I react to that situation? So when I ask myself questions with if, uh, if questions, I can slowly enter the character state of mind. Or when I re-question all the given circumstances, if I had a, if I had a, 
an argument back home with my wife before entering this place full of politicians, probably I would have acted differently or I, I would have done something differently or I would have stepped into this room differently. How would I step into this room if I also was late for, for the meeting because of uh, traffic jam in the rush hour. So all these if questions help me enter the situation more, uh, more specifically. So uh, when, uh, when we're trying to, to, build, uh, to build a scene, to, to, to create a scene um, um, very believably, we have to ask all these questions. We have to go very thoroughly through all the questionnaires that might be bringing, bringing this character into a situation like, like that. So um, maybe I sound a little bit confusing. But <laughs> okay. No, no, it, all it, the modern, it makes yeah. all the sense. <laughs> okay, so all these modern acting techniques are based on Stanislavski's system. And uh, sensory work is only one aspect of, of, the, of the techniques because um, Stanislavski was trying to uh, incorporate uh, all his knowledge that he was, um, he was doing, uh, he was uh, building through all the years of his career uh, and uh, tried to really s systematically build a technique that would help the actors uh, deliver their performances um, no matter what, each time from scratch, uh, believably. Because we have to know that when we perform in theater, it's um, always from the scratch. Because when you perform for the camera, you hit one take like uh, perfectly and this one take will go into the edit and at the end of the day will be seen on screen or in theater, uh, in cinema and so forth. But in theater, we have to deliver performance every night from the scratch within the, the same given circumstances within the same given emotional state of mind of the character and so so on. So, yeah, he started actually, Stanislavski, um, he started to um, research, doing the, the research, uh, how, to, how to help the actors get relaxed. And he used the yoga techniques from Eastern techniques uh, of meditation and relaxation, and he incorporated uh, those techniques into his, his system. So one of the techniques uh, is also uh, derived from yoga, for example. So breathing, relaxing, meditating is very, very important. And actually when we do yoga or when we do meditation we can see that we're entering into our body again in a different way but again we're entering our body we are entering into into our sensory world uh, sensory world of a body we feel the body so that's the point uh, we do yoga to get out of our mind so it's like meditation or relaxation. And all the other techniques used for the actors are based on these aspects. And utterly your technique? <laughs> and utterly mine. Fortunately, I had the chance and the opportunity to work with several uh, worldwide, worldwide um, um, uh, appreciated actors and mentors and actor coaches, Joanna, Merlin, David Zinder, uh, Lee Delong, Andre Delvaux, Vladimir Davidovich, Tarasenko, um, and so forth. They were always um, 
uh, they all of them actually were always like um, um, saying that only their technique works. So when the mixed martial arts occurred, I said, this is what I've been talking about. Do whatever the fuck works for you. So there's not only one technique. There are several, and I use all of them. But only one, for example, one exercise from, uh, I don't know, Ned Manderinos, Outer Spatial Objects. He has one <laughs> very special <laughs> exercise, which is uh, sometimes considered very strange, but I use it. So I pick the exercises from each method or every method, and I combine them uh, in a way that works best for me. I use MMA in in acting. <laughs> I, I don't only use jiu-jitsu or krav maga or karate or box, but I combine them all. Like MMA in a cage combines all the, all the martial arts to achieve one goal, that is to defeat the op opponent. opponent. <laughs> um, I remember once um, um, when you explained to me that no matter how crazy your day is, you know, then you get, get ready to get on the stage. And a minute before the stage, all everything that happened to you disappears and it's just you and the stage. You told me that um, no one cares where you're coming from because this character that you need to emerge yourself into is not actually your life, your past, your, your, your day, right? And that you somehow just manage to perform daily in the theater, as you explained, it's very different than, than um, doing movies. Um, <clears throat> So I wanted to ask you from this perspective, because you also mentioned compassion before that, um, how do you become compassionate, for instance, to the characters, to the roles that are not very likable, like murderers or, you know, abusers or, you know, how do you cultivate compassion? How do you emerge yourself in that feeling um, to actually being able to become this person? Yeah, first to answer your uh, first part of a question or uh, your observation. <laughs> observation. Yeah, to, to be able to do that, uh, to concentrate or to, to be able to, to put yourself in a creative state of mind, regardless of what your day might have been previously. Uh, so you have to work extensively to, to achieve that. So you have to go through the process of relaxation, concentration, or whatever you need to do before you enter on stage or in front of the camera. And regarding the second part of the question, um, it, how, to, how to be compassionate toward, uh, towards uh, a very strange character or uh, deviated complex. character, <laughs> complex yeah. character. All, all characters are actually complex. So we have to know that there, there's not, not, not everything is um, so black and white. There are uh, hundreds of shades of gray in between. So all the characters are actually complex. But uh, how to enter into these deviate um, characters and to and being able not to judge them in advance um, the way they are or how they behave or what they do or what have they done. You have to enter into their world. So you have to ask yourself, what would I do if something like that would happen? Or um, uh, what must have had happened to, to uh, that this person is able to do something like that? So we have to 
understand their given circumstances. We have to understand their impulses. We have to we have to enter their state of mind. Um, what why they are the way they are. So this this uh, asks for or is calling for a lot of compassion actually, because uh, if you want to deliver a performance that's um, truly believable, you shouldn't judge in advance the character you're playing, but you you should be able to fully understand and fully, um, how should I put it, justify, to fully justify their impulses. And uh, when the students ask me, professor, how should I achieve that? I, for example, you have to play a serial killer. Um, I always say, did you kill a mosquito in your life? Did you run into, into a, I don't know, a, a cloud of mosquitoes on a beach or anywhere else? Uh, and they were biting you constantly. Did you kill any of them? Yes, you did. So you had the impulse of killing, right? Okay, apply that to a scene or do a substitution. We call it substitute a certain impulse or a certain person with something that triggers your inner self with the same impulse. So, yeah, (laughs) those uh, deviated characters are really usually more complex than others because we have to... We have to dig into our inner selves more thoroughly than we should usually do for a romantic character that's, you know, just kissing and having fun. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's the whole um, science of emotions and, uh, you know, negative emotions or whatever. It's much harder to face sometimes, right? And uh, uh, what you were mentioning uh, to me, Smash, like a lot of... um, um, willingness to obse- observe, you know, to observe yourself in these situations and also a lot of listening. You know, like sometimes when you're not afraid, when you kind of eliminate fear, um, then you can actually really look into someone without prejudice. Um, because the fear is such a big factor. Like, for instance, if uh, we would be facing a serial killer on the other side of the table, right? Um, we would probably, you know, talk to this person with a lot of fear if he knew that he is a serial killer. So to, to be able to not to have prejudice over accepting, I'm, I'm, I think there's so much listening and so much um, this inner uh, curiosity uh, that doesn't uh, allow you to actually have fear to, to, to go deeper into these characters, right? Fear is... Uh always present so (laughs) how to face it so firstly we have to admit to ourselves that we are afraid that's the first step because if we push this fear somewhere under the guts it's going to emerge even more uh, heavily or or it's going to emerge some other way Um, more potently or whatever. So yeah, first we have to face it. First we have to uh, consciously uh, admit to ourselves that we are afraid. Then this is the first step. Then we can go to the next step and we cannot jump over the steps because I mean, we could. We could ju- we could jump from step one to step five on the staircase, but uh, we wouldn't be able to step one step lower then, but we would fall for four, five steps at the same time. So we should go step by step. So in the case that we have to... Uh, to climb down the, the staircase, uh, we are able to go step by step again. Otherwise, we can, as I said, we can jump over five steps 
but then we're going to fall five steps. So yes, the first step is to consciously, <laughs> consciously um, uh, admit to ourselves or we have to face that fear. And then we can go further. But when you're facing a serial killer, you know, um, <laughs> you know, uh, you're trying to to comprehend or to to understand why why he or she did something he or she did. So it it takes or it takes uh, a lot of compassion to do so. Uh, the way you're explaining this is um, very uh, interesting from the perspective. It seems to me from, you know, from the outsider who doesn't do acting, it feels as a lot of mindfulness is present in every actor. Uh, that you need to work a lot on understanding your own emotions to be able to overcome these steps, right? To be able to actually dive as deep as possible into this character, to accept this character, have compassion for it, and so on, for him or her. Um, um, I wanted to ask you about that, um, you know, presence, that mindfulness, well, that work on yourself, yeah. So we are back to relaxation, for example, because yeah. when this heavy emotion emerges, uh, I have to consciously follow it, I have to consciously see what's going on with inside me at this certain moment. And breathing properly helps a lot because we can hyperventilate, for example, in a situation like that. But getting an actress or an actor in that kind of a process back, I always say, okay, now breathe. But for example, okay, they always ask me, but what's the, the right way to breathe? And I also always say, try to sense the smell of a space you're sitting in. And that's the correct way to breathe. Not breathe in deep, inhale, exhale. That's bullshit, actually. It's, we do it constantly. But relaxed breathing is trying to smell something, trying to specifically smell the other person's perfume or try to smell the flowers on a table two meters away from you. This is the correct breathing. So our body completely knows what's the right breathing when it enters into the sensory work. Yeah, right. When I'm trying to smell something, I'm going to breathe into my diaphragm, which is uh, the total abdomen, not only into my lungs, because breathing into the lungs is not the correct kind of breathing i mean it's you can use it for apnea and so forth uh, when you um, consciously actually hyperventilate to to trick your mind to trick your brains that you have more oxygen in your lungs than you actually do so yeah the correct breathing is actually smelling so yeah when these heavy emotions emerge you have to again to face them so that's the only way to, to put them into your conscious. You have to face them. You have to deal with them. You cannot push them away. Anyhow, you cannot push them away because if you're going to push them away, they're going to emerge even uh, more, act yeah, more intense some other way. People who aren't used to using these techniques, that uh, they should also have help to get out of the characters, right? Um, so that um, um, you can basically damage yourself in some ways. Could you say more about this process? Yeah, well, that's why the process is going step by step. You're not entering the character or you're not doing the characterization uh, until very late in the process. So the system is built like uh, you have basic exercises in all the modern techniques, not only Stanislavski. And as I said, all the modern techniques are based on Stanislavski's system. But yeah, the characterization 
uh, part of building uh, um, a play or uh, a performance or a movie, that's the last part, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as are some exercises which are very difficult to, to go through, uh, for example, private moment, emotional exercise, and so forth. Because when you're um, re-experiencing some trauma emotion or trauma situation, uh, there should be always at least seven years uh, old um, old event to, to approach it in a systematic way. Because otherwise... Uh, Otherwise, these um, these situations are too too fresh, and it can be it can it can do more harm than good. So, yeah. But of course, all these exercises should be monitored and should be done by professional because um, it takes. It also takes the time to to completely enter the exercise comme il faut, as French would say, uh, the way it should be done. So um, it's like, uh, for example, when you're practicing Oizuki or Mabashigeri or Maigeri in karate, you should uh, you should do one hundred thousand um, reps to do it properly. It's the same here. Right, so it takes time to 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 do it properly. And um, but if you if you have a good coach, if you have an experienced coach, it can go really faster. But um, yeah, the process is um, one aspect that shouldn't be run through. Um, every step should be taken the way it should be taken. Uh, you mentioned um, uh, memories. I mean, something like trauma or some experience that should be seven years. You know, not not to fresh, to stir it up. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, just to mention because I'm following this stuff. It's a lot of um, uh, psychology of emotions and how to work on emotions out there. But uh, what I'm really interested from your perspective is how. What is the role of emotions and memories in your math? Do you relate to personal experience a lot to create certain emotional and character states in acting? Or um, do you follow this seven-year rule? Or because your experience, that's, is that a different thing that applies to you? I do follow this year, uh, rule of seven years uh, passing by. Uh, but uh, you should also know that different acting techniques apply it differently. So there was, um, um, in early stages of Stanislavski's, Stanislavski's technique, um, there, was, um, there were two of his students, Boleslav, and Baktango, who approached it differently. One was uh, uh, one was like um, so. One said that he believes in imagination, which is also a very very basic tool for each actor and every actor. But the other one um, stood after his point of view that it has to be empirical. So everything the actor does should be empirically um, already written into his, um, into his emotional um, diary. Uh, but uh, I do, I practice emotional, uh, emotional exercise uh, with the rule of uh, seven years or one cycle in a, in a human's life, that's seven years, um, seven years should pass by because otherwise it's too, too close. You didn't actually have the chance or the time to completely process it. Uh, uh, you didn't ask all the questions or you didn't uh, consider it from all the aspects or so seven years i think it's uh, one 
cycle that should be applied to emotional exercise before uh, entering into a trauma that happened um, in one person's life. Um, when you were younger, you had an um, acting studio and you worked uh, a lot of pro bono uh, work with um, different groups uh, to teach them this method. Uh, one of them were also, I don't know how to call them, like socially uh, challenged youth. And you did uh, this kind of work and you did um, films with them and so on. Uh, do you think that um, uh, working with them helped them, um, uh, you know, fell them with their emotional well-being? Of course, I think so. <laughs> because I wrote the screenplay that was based on, they, they were playing heroes, you know, <laughs> teenage heroes, riding the mountain bikes down the staircase of uh, an old abandoned castle. They were all uh, casted as uh, like uh, mathematical genius, uh, uh, physics genius, IT genius, you know. And of course, there were always... Uh, some problems while working with them because they were they considered or they they thought that when we do the fight scenes on screen you know that we fight for real and I said no 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 guys listen we have to repeat this take for I don't know 10 times so you shouldn't hit him in his face for real that we're going to do a choreography of a fight scene and so you should be able to repeat it several times and then they said oh but when you drink whiskey you drink whiskey and when you smoke weed you smoke weed and when you take coke you take coke and I said no listen the whiskey in my glass is always an iced tea uh, the coke is some sugar powder and the wheat is usually ordinary tobacco because you should, you should be able to concentrate 12, 12 hours a day while shooting, and it takes months, you know, so you should be really fit and so forth. But their um, self-perception of, uh, of doing something creatively uh, and uh, building the characters they did and helping with all the, the technical aspects of shooting a movie really help them uh, building their self-image uh, in a better way very much. Um, I can only imagine, you know, that if you put uh, someone into a position of being uh, a genius in that, so that that definitely affects his perception of himself, <laughs> probably also gives you some uh, creative confidence at, at the end of the day, I, I would uh, assume, you know. Yes. It's no secret that you had a lot of stuff happening in your life, a lot of loss, um, family loss and so on. And we're not going to go into that, but um, what is crucial for your well-being, you know, because... Um, you probably still need to retrieve sometimes and, you know, take your time off uh, all these screens and, you know, audiences and so on. So um, how, how were you compensating, you know, um, when you needed time for yourself to recover from your own traumatic experiences? Like, how, what would you usually do and um, uh, what is crucial at now, you know, for your well-being? Well, first of all, uh, as you already know, I don't watch TV for more than 25 years already because the only good news is the bad weather. I don't use any of the social media. Um, I spend a lot of time in nature, walking my dogs and uh, doing sports, riding a motorbike. Um, I read a lot. I do watch movies and some TV series. Of course, it's considered uh, a must when you're doing a job I do. But um, I'm trying to meditate as much as I can. I do eat good. I try to prepare my own food anytime I can. And uh, I avoid vampires, you know. <laughs> I avoid people that suck my energy 
because we have to know that my job includes at least 40 to 50 people in a crew in theater or on movie set around me. So I have to focus. I'm able to, to go into, um, uh, to go into the alpha state of mind. So I do a lot of uh, power napping on set. I sit in a chair, I switch it off. And when they call me in, we're ready to shoot, I wake up and I have no work. But um, with all these um, loss experiences, it's, I don't have a, I don't have a, recipe how to to go through that because each if each of us has to deal it in its own way in his own way in her own way so yeah i i went into the forests and on the seaside and <clears throat> meditated yeah but um i think you know if you if you switch like um, the workaholic aspect with some, I don't know, other extreme uh, doing or behaving, it's not much of a help. So I try to keep the balance in everything I do, in work and in my private life. So it should be balanced somehow. It's not always easy, but I'm doing my best to achieve it, <laughs> of course. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for this conversation. And I hope that it uh, it brought some nice, uh, you know, buzz in you too, uh, because this was extremely um, fun for me, uh, a lot of uh, learning. So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I hope that sometime in the future, I'll have another chance to talk to you about something specific about this topic again. So thank you so much, um, Seba, for everything. Um, and speak to you again sometime soon. Okay, Sashka, thank you. <laughs>